I had just added more than a thousand potential buyers to my email list, which was a huge increase in my audience. There was one day left before Black Friday, the biggest print sales opportunity of the year. Would I be ready for what happened next? If you want to sell your work, building an audience of potential buyers is the most important thing you can do. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you the simplest way to go from followers who like and comment on your photos to people who are actually willing to buy them. But how do you take an Instagram follower who likes your work and get them to buy it? Part of it comes down to knowing the likely audience for your photos before you even start selling them. And in the beginning, you don't know for sure, but there are ways to figure it out. And I've actually started working with some photographers who have huge follower accounts, and now they're looking to make that transition into sales. So this is one of the things we're working through. I also do a deeper dive on audiences and other art photography topics in my newsletter. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the newsletter below. When you're not sure who might buy your work, there is one other way to tell. It's simple and low cost. You give it away. Print giveaways are a great way to not only see if people want to acquire your work, but if done properly, they can lead to your first sales. With a standard giveaway, you just post on Instagram and direct people to a landing page. They sign up for a chance at winning a free print. Now, most people who enter your giveaway won't buy anything from you, but do they like your work enough to want to own it? In most cases, yes, they wouldn't have signed up otherwise, and that makes them a potential collector. So I made another video where I showed how I started with a new Instagram account, and even with a modest following, I was still able to get enough buyers to sell $4,300 over two days when I launched my online store. Most of my first sales came from people who signed up for my giveaway. But right after that early success, it was crickets. And I soon discovered that print sales is not a way to generate passive income. You need to work at it if you want something sustainable. I needed to find a way to keep building that audience of potential buyers. So I decided to kick things up a notch. It was early November 2021, and I just read about an idea to turbocharge my mailing list by offering a new type of giveaway. Now, as I said, there's the standard giveaway where someone signs up in exchange for a chance at winning a print. Then there's the viral giveaway. You can make your giveaway go viral by offering extra entries to anyone who refers others. That way, you can get two to up to 10 times as many signups. You'll have a lower success rate when it comes to converting viral entries to buyers, but you'll still likely make more sales overall. And until then, I hadn't spent any money on marketing, but I wanted to go even further than just having a viral giveaway. And I wouldn't recommend doing ads until you've exhausted any free types of advertising or promotion, but you may reach a point where it makes sense to do an ad spend. And I had a pretty good idea of who my audience was. And if you know that, Facebook ads allow powerful ways to micro-target people who are your likely buyers. And even if you don't know your audience as well, this is one of the ways that you can help find one. Facebook ads promoting giveaways can be one of the lowest cost ways to acquire sales leads. In many cases, you'll only pay a dollar or less per giveaway signup. So I committed to spending a thousand dollars. I'd already done 4,300 in sales with just 74 giveaway signups a month earlier. What if I could get a thousand signups? As everything kicked off right out of the gate, my ads were averaging about 40 to 50 entries per day, which was pretty good. When the Facebook algorithm learns what works, your results usually get even better. And then I woke up one morning to almost 300 new entries, six times what I'd been getting, but it seemed a little too good to be true. And after some digging, I saw I was getting most of the traffic from one source, Contest Girl. It turns out it's a website that recommends links to different contests. First, I thought, you know, this is great. I'm getting tons of new entries. But when I looked at some of their Facebook pages, these people seem more like professional contestants. I don't think they had any interest in my work. They just wanted to win something and maybe even try to resell it. So by the end of the campaign, I did get more than a thousand entries, which was great. 
but it would have been a lot better if there weren't so many from the contest website. So I contacted the winner, then started emailing those who didn't win. I said how much I appreciated them taking part and would now like to offer a special discount for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It didn't go over well. I did make one sale that week, but it was to someone who wasn't even part of the giveaway. So how did I turn that giveaway fiasco around and make all this work? And what are some ways it can work for you? Whether you're doing a viral or a standard giveaway or even one with Facebook ads, it doesn't really matter. People don't usually buy art the first time they see it. My previous buyers had been following me on Instagram for a couple of months or longer. That gave them a chance to learn more about my work. Most people will need to see your art up to 20 or more times before they're willing to buy. Some people from my ill-fated giveaway eventually made a purchase, but no one bought anything right away because they weren't ready to. So a giveaway works best for adding potential buyers to your mailing list. It doesn't usually work well for instant sales. So how do you convert a giveaway contestant? It helps to understand why people buy art in the first place. And in the beginning, I thought people would buy if they really liked my work and it looked good on the wall. And that is a big part of it. What I didn't realize at first is that people don't just buy the art, they also buy into the artist. And as I've learned over the last two years, it's always best if they buy into what you're doing especially if you want to charge higher prices. And when you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, the way people talk about famous artists, uh, they say, you know, it's a Warhol or it's a Cindy Sherman print. But even when you're unknown, like me, buyers still want to know something about your journey as an artist. And buying a print allows them to share in that journey. Having someone on your email list gives you multiple chances to show them your work. And that alone helps them to get closer to buying, but it also allows you to tell the story of how and, and why you do what you do. And if they know more about what inspires you to create the work, that will help inspire them to buy your work. Social media and your website are great places to start telling that story, but it's through email where you can form those deeper connections with potential buyers. And if you're interested in some ways to tell the story of your work, it may help to watch this video next. And if you found any of this helpful, like or comment. If you're new here, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of my new videos or updates. I'll see you next time.